Good evening, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this evening's evening prayer. It's Wednesday, the 31st of August. So let's pray as we come to the end of another day. Today we remember Saint Aidan, Bishop of Lindisfarne and missionary of the church. He died in the year 651. Let's pray. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory forever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Canticle this evening is taken from Matthew chapter 5, what we call the Beatitudes. Rejoice and be glad, for you are the light of the world, and great is your reward in heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who suffer persecution for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Rejoice and be glad, for you are the light of the world, and great is your reward in heaven. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand, and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. Say the Magnificat this evening, the Song of Mary. Remember your promise of mercy to Abraham and his children forever. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. He has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. 
He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Remember your promise of mercy to Abraham and his children forever. And the collect for this evening, Eternal Lord, our beginning and our end, bring us with the whole creation to your glory hidden through ages past and made known in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the prayer for Bishop Aidan or St. Aidan, Bishop of Lindisfarne. Everlasting God, you sent the gentle Bishop Aidan to proclaim the gospel in this land. Grant us to live as he taught in simplicity, humility, and love for the poor through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, our psalm this evening is Psalm 91. Psalm 91. We we'll say the refrain. <clears throat> Keep me as the apple of your eye. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High, who are and abides under the shadow of the Almighty, shall say to the Lord, my refuge and my stronghold, my God in whom I put my trust. For he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He shall cover you with his wings and you shall be safe under his feathers. His faithfulness shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of any terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, of the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor of the sickness that destroys at noonday. Though a thousand fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, yet it shall not come near you. Your eyes have only to behold to see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your stronghold, there shall no evil happen to you, neither shall any plague come near your tent. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you up, they shall bear you in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because they have set their love upon me, therefore will I deliver them. I will lift them up because they know my name. They will call upon me, and I will answer them. I am with them in trouble. I will deliver them and bring them to honor. With long life will I satisfy them and show them my salvation. Keep me as the apple of your eye. And our prayer. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. And as you have bound us to yourself in love, 
leave us not to call upon your name, but grant us your salvation, made known in the cross of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, let me read the meditation for Psalm 91. This psalm is a song of deep consolation to the one looking to God for rest amid the adversities of life. It cons its consistent theme is the rest and peace God gives. Amid the storms of life, God is a safe and serene harbor. Have you experienced this or are you internally frenetic? Do you, do you see the Lord himself, your heavenly father, ruling over all that washes into your life, hard and easy, good and bad? Do you see him nurturing you along in life, loving you, protecting you? working all for good. Rest in him again today. After all, the Lord Jesus proved that this is who God is. Jesus said, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Dwelling in the shelter of the Most High slows down the frenetic the frantic spinning of our hearts. Life with God blankets our fast-paced lives with inner shalom, inner peace. He is the God of peace. This is the whole reason Jesus came, as announced by the angel at his birth. The 18th century hymn writer Charles Wesley captured it well in this hymn called Thou Hidden Source of Calm Repose. Jesus, my all in all thou art, my rest in toil, my ease in pain, the healing of my broken heart. In war, my peace, in loss, my gain, my smile beneath the tyrant's frown, in shame my glory and my crown. In want my plentiful supply, in weakness my almighty power, in bonds my perfect liberty, my light in Satan's darkest hour, in grief my joy unspeakable, my life in death, my heaven in hell. Amen. That's who Jesus is to us, sisters and brothers. May he be that to you tonight in Christ alone. Jesus Christ is our life. And in him we find calm repose, sweet rest from all the anxieties of the world. Amen. Our New Testament reading is Mark chapter 5 Mark chapter 5 and we are reading from verse 35 to the end we carry on the story that we started last night but let's read it first and then I'll make the comment while Jesus was still speaking some people came from the house of of Jairus the synagogue leader your daughter is dead they said why bother the teacher anymore overhearing what they said Jesus told him don't be afraid just believe he did not let anyone follow him except Peter James and John the brother of James when they came to the home of the synagogue ruler Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. 
he went in and said to them, Why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha Kum, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately, the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. At this, they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. Amen. So we know the story. Uh, we, we, the story started yesterday where Jairus, the synagogue ruler, asked Jesus to come and heal his daughter who was sick to the point of death. On his way to do this, a woman who, who had a... Uh, and a, a flow of blood that was causing her um, discomfort and illness for 12 years touched the hem of his garment and she because she touched in faith she received healing she received the, the, the power of Jesus flowing into her body and, and drying up the, the, the ailment that she was going through and so there was this commotion, this, this discussion, and that's where we left it yesterday. And as a result of this, this situation, Jesus was delayed in going to Jairus' home to heal his daughter. So the messengers came and, and, and told the, 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 the synagogue ruler, Jairus, that your daughter is dead. So, you know, don't bother the teacher anymore. In other words, uh, we expect Jesus to heal the sick child. But after, he's, after she's dead, there is nothing he can do about that. You know, it, it's one thing for a physician to bring healing to somebody who is sick. It's another thing for that physician to raise that person from the dead. The child is dead. He's beyond, she's beyond help. She's gone. Her, her situation is hopeless. They say to Jairus. Jesus reassured him that Jesus said, don't be afraid. Just believe. And those two words, sisters and brothers, are constant throughout the gospel and in fact throughout all of scripture do not be afraid believe trust have faith in jesus you know I, I, this is when i think about the the, the situation of jairus's daughter dying we, we think about different things in our lives i, I you know, it doesn't have to be physical death but anything that we feel is hopeless a hopeless situation a hopeless circumstance in our lives you know it's it's one thing to 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 believe that there is a ray of hope as long as the child was sick there was a ray of hope that that she could be healed but now that she's dead, there is no hope. There is no way that the teacher can help this child anymore. And Jesus proved them wrong. There is no problem, sisters and brothers, that is beyond Jesus' power to heal, to save, to deliver. Uh, th there is no hopeless situation in Christ. Don't be afraid. Only believe. And I think, sisters and brothers, those are the words for us. It's the words for us tonight. It's the words always for us. We, we may be going through very tough time. I mean, the, uh, the world, our country, is going through pretty difficult time economically. 
There are people who have lost their jobs. There are people who have lost, who's, who can't pay their rent, who've, who have lost their, their homes. And there are those who, who, who can't pay the, 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 the utilities rent that we're told that is going to be so, so high in the next few months that people will have to shut down the heat or the light because they will not be able to afford these things. We, it appears very much a hopeless situation. And yet, if this, if this story teaches us anything, sisters and brothers, it's teaching us that there is no problem that is so dire that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ cannot deliver us from, cannot save us from, cannot, uh, can, cannot raise, raise again from the dead. And here he goes. All he asks from us is not to be afraid when we go through this very hopeless circumstance. Don't be afraid. Just believe. Trust in Jesus. Believe in his power to save, to deliver, to help you. Whatever the circumstance that you might be going through. Sisters and brothers, we are all going through these things. Some of us more than others, some of us worse than others. But the message of the scripture, the message of Jesus, is that we are not to be afraid when we, when we go through these situations, these times that appear hopeless. Instead, believe. Put your faith in Jesus. Because he alone can raise us from the dead. He alone can, can give life to the lifeless circumstances in our lives. Situations in our lives that are dead, Jesus Christ can resurrect again. Just like he resurrected this child. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father and God, we think of the difficulties in our world and the, 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 the various storms that people are going through the storms of life financial financial storms economic storms storms of illness where they are truly they are, feel a sense of hopelessness a sense that there is no there is no there is no healing in sight to the point where just like the servant says, there's no point bothering you anymore because the child is dead. The situation is beyond repair. And so, Lord, we, there are many who feel that way tonight, who feel that there is no need to continue to pray even. There is no need to continue to, to read the scriptures, to, to worship, to turn to you because the situation seems hopeless. And yet we know, O oh God, that there are no hopeless situations in you. And so give us the grace, we pray, not to be afraid, but to believe, to trust, to hope, to have faith in you that you can and you will deliver us from the seemingly dead situations that we are in the hopeless situations that that your people may be going through tonight and so lord whatever whatever those circumstances may be we pray that you will bring hope bring healing bring deliverance, bring comfort to those who mourn. May, may your people put their trust in you tonight, not in the circumstances, 
not in doctors, not in banks, not in jobs, but Lord, to trust you to deliver, to deliver them, to deliver us out of the various difficult, hopeless situations that we may be in. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And I won't, I won't name everyone tonight, but I'll pray a general prayer, the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. And our final night prayer. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the silent hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may rest upon your eternal changelessness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace and rest tonight, sisters and brothers. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good night, sisters and brothers.